Les from Thailand, from Retired and Living the Dream. Today's video is going to be another long one because I'm washing the car. These usually are long ones and they go on a bit for a rant. But this one I think you might find interesting for all of those people that want to reset their life. Is Thailand the place for you to reset everything? For those people who've been through divorce, bereavement or just want a change in life coming up to retirement, this is the video for you. Now, it's unscripted really. I'm just gonna ramble on about various things as we go along. Uh, but while I'm doing that, I'm gonna be washing the car. So I'll give it a wash and here we go. So, is it time to reset? I'm 61 years old now and I retired when I was 50. So I knew from a very early age, from basically when I got divorced at 42, that I was gonna retire at 50 and I never ever wanted really to work again because retirement, why do you need to work? Work, work, work all the time. And then most people retire nowadays at 65 years old or even more. And the governments around the world are trying to up that now to 70 before you get your pension and things like that. Now at 70 years old, I think you're sort of too old to do all the things that you wanted to do in life. I retired at 50 and I've done many, many things. So, for those people who want to listen to this, it's a, a ramble on. So I'm going to start off by when you were born. And we'll work up from when we've been born. So when you were born, everything is first. There's plenty of firsts. So life's full of firsts. Do you remember getting your first bike, your first holiday, your first camera, your first fishing trip, many, many firsts. And as you grow older, there are many, many firsts comes along with that as well. Do you remember your first beer? I can remember my first beer. I can remember my first pub that I went into. I was 15 years old and I had a tie on and a jacket to make myself look older. And I was chuffed a bit because that was my first beer and it's first trip into a bar. First time feeling that you're growing older and you're getting older. First girlfriend, first kiss, first job. First car. Do you remember getting your first car? My first car was a Ford Cortina, which my dad gave me. But then I can remember buying my first car. It was a Ford Capri. Wow, I thought it was the bee's knees with this Ford Capri. Beautiful car, second hand car for a beautiful car, everybody. It was a head turner and I got it customized because I was 18 year old and I thought, right, I had a good job. I had the money to pay for it. And I did all of these exciting things. First holiday. Now we were poor and as a, a family, we didn't really have many holidays. We went to a, a zoo and theme park for our first holiday. We were there for a week. And that was the only holiday as a child that I ever had. So any holidays that I had after that, I can remember because it was so exciting because there was me at school thing and I'll never ever go on holiday because we're a poor family. So it was the first time on a plane and I went to Paris for a holiday and I loved it. I loved every minute of it because it was so exciting. So like I'm saying, life is full of firsts and then you get married and then you have your children, first children. It's all exciting now because your firsts are still going on but now you're teaching your kids for the first time first time at the beach first time doing everything first time in the garden first time so you're changing your first times to showing people their first times so when did your first times at doing things stop and that's probably when you got married and you had children because then other priorities come along, your wife, your children, your house, things that you needed to do. Mortgage payments, gas bills, electric bills, council taxes, car insurance, all of these things suck up your money to be able to do 
your things that you want to do as far as living life's concerned because it's expensive nowadays living in a house and living in the so-called suburban lifestyle so is Thailand the place to reset if you've got divorce or bereavement or you want to change in life then things can change over here you can restart your life over here if you've had a, a big financial heavy hit with the, your divorce you can start all over again I'm 61 years old and I'm buying this house now where we live at 61 I never ever thought I'd buy a house again at 61 years old but property over here is affordable I know there's going to be many people who will put on the comments that um, it'll never be yours but in reality, if you bought a house in America or England or Australia, is it really your house anyway? Because if you get divorced, you're going to lose it anyway, like I did. I got divorced and I lost everything. I had four houses, or almost four houses at one stage. Through divorce, lost everything. So, in reality, was it mine? No. But you can make arrangements here that you don't lose everything. And uh, I've done one or two videos with regard to buying property here and the pitfalls of buying property here and how you can protect yourself when you're buying property here. It's common sense really, you just listen to the advice of the people that, in, that are in the know. Don't go thinking I know everything. Uh, now people ask me what do I do here all the time because um, I'm retired, I don't have a job, and I actually do have a little bit of a job, it's a bit of a part-time thing really, and I do part-time life coaching, I help other people resettle to Thailand, I help people out with visas, and the nightmare of filling things in, I'm sort of a, a fixer, I can help people move on, I've helped people move on with financial difficulties, with divorce and I've sort of always done that really. For years and years and years I've done it because that's just the way I am. I'm a, a people person, I help other people. I look at things differently compared to other people and there is a solution to every problem in life. But sometimes people don't want to take them solutions because they don't like it but at the end of the day most people have to go with a different solution to what they want and uh, I've helped many people out over the years with certainly financial and divorce things because it's a bit of experience I've got I've been divorced three times ah now I'm going to People are going to be saying, well, how can you comment on marriage and relationships when I've been divorced three times? Well, how I look upon it, I don't look upon it as a failure. I look upon it, I've learned something. I've learned that the person that I got divorced from was the wrong person, was the wrong choice. We all make wrong choices in life. But is that a failure? Because you make the wrong choice? No. I don't look upon it like that at all. I look upon it if you learn from it. Some people might say, I've done a lot of learning, which I have, yeah. But, you know, I can, my learning curve from that was solicitors. Everybody thinks a solicitor knows what they're talking about and the advice that they give. But in reality, a solicitor is using you as a cash cow because you are his income and he will milk you for every penny that he can get out of you because it's only for a short lived period anyway whilst you're going through the divorce but he will make your divorce so so complicated so the letters the bitterness between your partner and you and he loves that because the more bitter you are towards them the more he's going to get out of or divorce and they're not in the game to 
make the divorce easy. I learnt that after the first solicitor. And I've given advice to many, many people with regard to not being the cash cow from a solicitor. And many people have said to me afterwards, you were right, Liz. You were right. But some people listen, some people don't. Like I say, any advice that I give, you can listen to it, you can act on it, or you can choose to ignore it. But at the end of the day, uh, information is power. And if you know some good information, it helps you along the way. So, for instance, like moving to Thailand, is Thailand the place for you? Now I've done videos on relationships, how to find the right girl, how to avoid being scammed in Thailand. I'm a world of information with regard to living in Thailand. Because I've been here for so long. Do I know everything? No, I don't. I still learn things every day. But I've had many people ask many, many questions over everything about living here in Thailand. And I believe my answers are okay. Again, it's to do with what do you want? Now moving to Thailand and having your life reset can be a good thing or a bad thing. I know both people who thoroughly enjoy it. I'm one of them people I can say I thoroughly enjoy it because um, I'm not stupid. There are people who come over here with lots and lots of money thinking I'm going to buy a big house, I'm going to live a really good life and they lose it to a, a Thai girl because they haven't taken precautions on how to protect their investments and how, how to protect their money. And I've seen other guys living on basic pension. The basic pension in England is about £700 a month and I know people who live on £700 a month and have a fantastic time. They're out drinking three or four times a week. They have a regular girlfriend. So I've done videos on living here on 50,000 baht a month. Now I'm buying this house. So it's obviously costing me a little bit more than 50,000 baht a month now, but I've only just started buying this. So my total outgoings for buying this, this is a, was a brand new car two years ago. I bought this brand new car. I live on just under 60,000 baht a month. So you can buy yourself a house, live a good lifestyle, on 60,000 baht a month. I'll put that in US dollars, euros, and um, Australian dollars for people who want to do the conversions, and I'll do the conversions for you. So it gives you an idea how much you can live here for. But watch, look at my videos. How many holidays are gone? We were away at Christmas and New Year on a holiday. I live on my fire brigade pension. That's all I have is my fire brigade pension. Um, so I don't really have a lot of money, but I've got enough money to live on, to buy this house, to live a, a good life. And there's many people who will, who will say that I'm struggling on my type of money. But does this look like struggling to those people? Now, I'm not a bad person. I don't need to be entertained. I like my home comforts. So we have a home cinema system. We stop in, we have parties at our house every now and then. So we live an entertaining lifestyle without going to bars and clubs and things like that and venues. I like Thai food, so therefore eating Thai food is cheaper than eating foreigner food. And you'll find if you move over to Thailand, if you do the same thing, you can save an awful lot of money. Now I'm going to put my email below, so anybody who wants any information, please contact me and I'll help the best way that I can. But I'm open and honest, and everything that I say and I, everything that I do, there's no bullshit with me. I tell it how it is. So, that's the way that that goes. Let me have a look. Yeah, right, so I've just had a look just to see 
I've covered everything and there's a couple more things to say and what I've got to say is treat divorce as an open door it allows you to start doing the things that you want to do in life and if you look at it positively don't look at divorces negatively is that you buying your freedom to be able to do many of them first things again because you might not have a lot of money following divorce but what it does give you it give you the freedom and as I say my living expenses here is about 60,000 baht it's about 13 1400 pounds a month 1400 pounds a month and I'm buying me house I've got a new car beautiful wife good standard of living um, what more can I say really f from that I live a good life I live a comfortable life I can't complain am I happy yes I am because I wake up every day blue skies sunshine warm in England now it's freezing cold it gets dark look at all that's going on in the world at the minute you know there's with the, with the UK, with the government. I can watch the Sky News and just laugh at that because I'm a million miles away from it. And I don't mind where I am. Is Thailand a perfect place? No. It's not perfect. It has, it has its own rules, it has its own regulations, it has its own problems. But for me, that doesn't bother me. The paperwork a little bit every year. Is it very difficult to do? Nah. As I say, I've got workarounds for most paperwork in Thailand. And as I say, it's not illegal. I don't do anything illegal here. I love living in Thailand, so I we'll, would never do anything that would force them to say, you're doing something wrong, leave the country. But like everything in Thailand, Thailand is full of bureaucracy, paperwork, and there's ways around everything here. Legal ways around everything here as well. So that was my bit of a rant about recess, life in Thailand. Is it the place? What do you think? Leave your comments down below. If you've got any questions, send me an email. Until the next video, bye for now.